Welcome. Um, so it's my pleasure today we might get on to introducing our guest speaker. We have Kerry Rodley with the beautiful ears on today. Um, Kerry is actually a personal friend of mine, but she's fantastic at what she does. She has actually come out of tourism and hospitality. So she's one of our own. We can, um, we can safely say she gets it um, and, she, and she understands what's going on in the industry at the moment as well. Um, Kerry's the founder of Workshops in Wellbeing and her aim is to help people focus on their wellbeing so they have more time and energy to connect with themselves, their family, in their homes and in their communities. And she does this really well, Kerry. She's based in Port Stephen and she pops up absolutely everywhere. So she does lead by example. Um, having, worked, having worked in the wellbeing and positive psychology industry since 2009, Kerry has a degree in applied science and a diploma in positive psychology and wellbeing with a background as a professional organiser for over 10 years. Specially organ, uh, sorry, spe specialising in hoarding cases. Does anyone remember that television show about the hoarders? Mm. You know how they send in the experts? This is the lady. <laughs> this is the lady. Anyway, we warmly welcome Kerry to our morning tea this morning. Thank so you. Virtual clap. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is jazz hands. Apparently that's the hi. Um, but um, first I'd like to thank uh, Heath and um, Beck for allowing me to come on and um, talk to you guys today. Um, these are my cat ears. Because my cat, who would normally come, as soon as he hears I'm on a Zoom call, he would come in and, and walk across the screen with his little tail in the air and step on my keyboard. But I don't know if you can see, so I've got two two 17-year-old cats and a 16-year-old dog. So I don't know if you can see them there, but they're um, they're sleeping because they're old. They're rescues as well, so they're um, asleep in the sun at the moment. So they said they'd love to come. Thank you for inviting them. So that's why I've got the, the ears. Um, but just to introduce myself, I, like Beck, I am a mango. Um, and so this is my first time doing a Zoom call, um, being the presenter. So normally I'd be up in front of the audience, you know, hands are flapping and walking up and down the, the room and getting people involved. So um, this is almost like playing that game, um, taboo, we put your arms tied behind your back. Um, so it's going to be a bit like that for, um, for me, but we'll, you know, see how I, see how I go. Hopefully it's uh, all good. Um, but yeah, as Beck said, um, just to give you a quick little intro of my background, um, actually like Heath, I've got a, a background in agriculture. So I started the first 10 years of my, um, my life as a, a person who worked for like CSIRO and the Walmart company and everything, working with sheep and, and sheep and wool. Um, and then one day I thought, I'm sick of this business. I want to get into what I love doing, which is travel. So I went back to college and got a, a diploma in tourism, uh, travel and tourism. Uh, started my career uh, working in the backpacking industry in Melbourne. Then I, my husband's in the army, so we tend to move around a bit. I uh, was posted up to Townsville, so worked for Townsville Enterprise up there, working with um, Magnetic Island and the Great Barrier Reef. Then uh, we were posted to the US. So I was working with Virginia Tourism over there and all the historic um, things about America, which is fantastic. And then um, when we were posted back to Australia, uh, my career in tourism um, culminated with working at Canberra Tourism as the campaign manager. So I don't know if um, you know how hard uh, destination on North Coast have in, in trying to sell themselves. I pretty much think you know everyone would love it up there. Um, imagine trying to sell Canberra as a tourism destination. It it, it was hard. Uh, it was very challenging. It was fantastic. Don't get me wrong, but it was more than um, what was the, the catch cry? More than uh, politicians porno and pyrotechnics. So, <laughs> so it was like, it was like, um, you know, overcoming those stereotypes of what Canberra was about before we could um, get, you know, people to come and visit. But um, I love my time in the tourism industry. Um, I got, then got posted up to Brisbane and um, that's when the, glo uh, the global financial crisis hit. So jobs that I was going for, like, you know, the tourism, um, different things like the museum or uh, Brisbane marketing, you know, normally you would get 100 people applying. There was over 1,000 people applying for these jobs. So that's when I thought, what else do I like to do? I like to organise. So I, that's a bit of my uh, lime. I love, love to organise and be organised. So I uh, then started, I went and trained and uh, began my business as a professional organiser. And as um, Beck said, you know, working in that for a couple of years, I, um, because I have a, a family history of hoarding in my parent, my um, father and whatnot, 
I was getting asked to come and work with uh, psychologists and social workers, um, helping hoarders in their house. So this would be people where they're going to lose their children or going to be losing their homes because of the enormous amount of clutter in the homes. Um, and so then that led on to the sort of the speaking circuit and speaking at the, the uh, squalor and uh, hoarders conference. Yes, there is such a thing. Um, and just like Beck said, it really was like the TV show. It was, it was really quite um, a stressful um, situation. And that got me interested in uh, psychology. So that's when I also went and got a, um, my positive psychology diploma. Um, and sort of now with my, my business, I can combine the two uh, loves, you know, the professional organising as well as the many different um, topics like resilience and whatnot to do with um, professional Sorry, positive psychology. So, um, so that's me in a, in a nutshell. Now I've moved to uh, Port Stephens with Beck, and um, absolutely love it here. So this is where uh, hopefully we're going we're going to stay. Um, but I'll go now into my little share screen. Fingers crossed. <laughs> here we go. Into there we are. You just go share. That's what. There we go. We okay. can see you. Yay! <laughs> All good. Thumbs yes. up. Yep, lovely. Okay, so um, going on to the presentation for today, Simplify Declutter Your Home, Declutter Your Life. So this is all about, um, now that we do have this time at home, it's about looking at what's happening in your home and then when it is time to go back to the work and uh, back to, sorry, working in the office, things that strategies we can take from our time uh, here in the home and taking them back to our office to help keep ourselves organised. So... On to the first uh, page up, page down, page up, page down, page up, page down. How do you do the... Ah, there we go. Hmm. There we are. Wait, wait, there we go. <laughs> Sorry, that was a, oh, a heart-stopping moment. My buttons weren't working. Um, so just going through a bit of the background of clutter, there's three consequences of having clutter and being disorganised in, um, in our lives. And that is finances, the amount of money we can uh, lose just by because we've lost things, we buy them again, uh, buying bargains because we think, oh, it's a bargain, bring them home and they clutter up the house when we didn't need it. Things like, you know, losing invoices. So then we've got late fees, we've got cancellation fees and things like that. Um, another consequence is time. Time we've lost looking for things, like always looking for the car keys, far, trying to find bits of pieces of particular paperwork, um, missing appointments or events because we didn't write them down, we weren't organised, we didn't have it in our, in our diary or in our um, different uh, systems. And um, even just things like getting out the door in the morning, getting to work when we used to do that, getting the kids off to school, having that time that we're just continuously um, overwhelmed because we just don't have um, that organisation. And the other thing, the third consequence is productivity. So clutter, you may know, having clutter in, uh, in your you know, immediate area also clutters your brain. It weighs you down, um, it muddles your thinking and, and it pretty much causes you stress, which we do not need. Um, in this time and place. So they're the three consequences. It's the, um, the finances, the time and the productivity. Ah, oh, there we go. So sorry that <laughs> I'm gonna put this song in your head. Let it go. Basically, I'm looking at the obstacles to letting go of clutter um, in your life. So um, hopefully that song won't stay in there for too long, because I'll move on. Okay, overwhelm. Overwhelm is a big one for most people because they just go, where do I start? I don't know where to start. So it's just too overwhelming. So I'm not even going to, um, you know, begin at all. And the thing is to remember, you know, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So if you just start small, start with like your undie drawer, start with your toiletry uh, compartment, just start with a drawer in the kitchen or something like that and a little bit at a time and you'll find it won't be so overwhelming. It was a gift. Don't you love a face? Um, when someone gives you something and you just go, oh, I love it, and you, you know, you, you really don't like it at all, but you have that um, thing, well, I've got, to, I've got to, you know, keep it because so-and-so gave it to me. What if they come over and it's not there? Um, my sister-in-law is a good one for this. She uh, loves to give me all sorts of trinkets and things that I have absolutely no need for. And one recent one was um, because I, I volunteer for Port Stephens Koalas. So one she gave me was this lovely um, purse and it had this big chunky furry koala stuck to it. It was like the most hideous thing. 
but the meaning behind it was nice. So she was thinking of me thinking, oh, you like koalas, I'll give you this. So you thank the person and then you um, donate it to someone else who would, you know, love a koala purse, but don't have that sort of, you know, oh, you know, that person gave it to me. It's about letting go of those um, emotions. Ah, here we go, the, uh, the guilt. So this is about, um, buying things that are hideously expensive and we think well we can't get rid of that because you know it cost me so much money i in fact have a jacket like this not as hideous i bought it when i was at college and you know at college we don't have any money um we're working little part-time jobs and i splashed out and i bought this jacket for four hundred dollars guess how many times i've worn this jacket like not um except for the times every time i give this presentation um you know and i'm live i actually put the jacket on and go hey um but apart from that i've never worn this jacket and that was four hundred dollars worth and i keep that jacket um not just as a prop for my presentations but as you know as a reminder of going you know why did i fork out that money but the thing is the money's not coming back if you don't wear the item someone else will love it so you can let go of that guilt and pass it on it's already happened. There's no reason for, for carrying that guilt around with us. It was inherited. Um, so this is a big one. If you have um, parents who have passed away or grandparents who have passed away and you've inherited things like this lovely silver set, which I have uh, of my mum's or your grandmother's china or that sort of thing. So when you look at it, you think, oh, you're thinking of that person who used to own it when they used to use it. So you have that emotional attachment to it. But chances are you don't like the thing yourself. It could be the most hideous set of, of crockery you've ever seen, but you have that, again, that guilt that I must keep it because it was grandma's. Rather than honouring grandma's um, memory and passing it on to someone who will love that item, who will use that item, you're not honouring their memory if it's hidden away in a cupboard gathering or gathering dust. Um, so it's about letting go of that emotion thanking them and then you know you can take a photo of it or do whatever um, but it's about not clutching it up your house with other people's um, items I all need it when so this is when we're not living in the present this is when we're living in the past or thinking about the future so in the example of these pants um, you know, I will need it when I get fat again. These are my fat pants. I'll need it when I put on weight or vice versa. You have your skinny clothes. I'll need it when, you know, I'm going to lose weight. I'll need it then. Rather than thinking, I'm going to look after who I am now and honour the size I am now or my life now. It could be, you know, you're keeping hold of your corporate suits when you don't work in that business anymore or you're keeping hold of different items that remind you of the past. It's about being in the present. So honouring who you are now, not thinking of what's going to happen in the future, not remembering, oh, remember when I was skinny and working in corporate and my life, you know, working in stilettos and now, you know, you're sitting um, at, at home in your, in your pyjamas and your Ugg boots going, well, this is who I am now. It's about honouring that and, you know, not thinking about the future or the past. It may come in handy one day. So this is um, more of a male uh, cause of clutter. So men tend to, um, I don't know if it's a hunter-gatherer thing in them, they tend to hold on to things. So with my husband, it's bits of timber. Our garage is full of little bits of timber for just in case it'll come in handy, um, you know, making stuff. Um, cable tie or these sorts of cables here, that's another one because, oh, you know, what if we move into another house where we're going to have 20 speakers everywhere when we need all this speaker wire or, you know, um, all these different tools in the, in the garage that, oh, but, you know, they'll come in handy for when I do some woodworking, which is never going to happen. So it may come in handy is more the, the, the male one. Um, they tend to, um, like I said, sort of collect things for one day. The emotional connection is more for the female. So we as females, we tend to have uh, emotions stored in items. So here's a good example of children's toys. So the child might have grown out of the toy. Um, the child might have said to, hey, mum, I'm, I'm prepared to let it go. But the mum um, has memories of when that child was playing uh, with the toy. So when they pick up this particular teddy or whatever it is, they'll go, oh, I remember when little, when little Bobby used to play with this and oh, it brings back such lovely memories. And then and that's, um, that's why we tend to keep hold of these sorts of things. And another one is children's artwork, you know, when they bring things home from school and they did a fantastic job, you know, doing these sorts of things. It might just be a piece of rubbish that the child
child itself goes, no, mum, you can let it go. But we do tend to have these emotional connections. So it's about, you know, you can take a photo of the item um, and then pass it on. It's about, you can still have those emotions, but not keep the item that's cluttering up the home. Okay, so we're moving on now. So we've gone through the obstacle to letting go. And we're moving on to the process of letting go. So before you begin, you have to ask yourself, why am I in this situation? Is it one of the, the reasons before? Is it because you're too busy and you don't have time to declutter and let go of things? Is it because um, your partner might be the, the collector of items or the family? The family is just a, a normally a, a messy family. And so you have other people in your household. Um, is it that you're a shopaholic and you love to go and find a bargain and bring them all home and, and have them in the house never to be seen again? Um, is it because someone has died and you've inherited half the, the house load of things? So once you know why you're in a situation, then you can start moving forward because if you don't deal with that, um, that reason, well, then it's going to happen again. So if you don't, um, you know, go, okay, honestly, I'm a shopaholic. I need to stop bringing home the bargains. It's going to happen again and again and again. So even if you declutter, um, it's still going to come back into the house. So the reason has to be dealt with. Okay, you have to want this. So the person's home it is, or the, uh, the people living in the house, it has to be their decision to do the decluttering and the letting go of items. Anything that belongs to someone else, um, don't touch it, that's their own decision. Um, so only, you can only declutter things that you own yourself. So um, an example could be, you know, when I went to declutter my husband's, uh, our garage for my little video series, I had to let him do that um, because I didn't own anything in the garage, they were his items. So it, um, it was up to him to let them go. Um, but another thing, when I was, um, I had a client who rang me and said, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, if it's Christmas time, I'm going to buy my daughter-in-law uh, you as a gift. I'm going, oh, that's fantastic. What a great idea. I bet she's really pleased. She, oh, no, no, it's a surprise. She doesn't know. She's just really messy. And I think it's time that she um, started organising her home. So you can imagine how that would have gone down. It would have been like someone saying, hey, Jenny Craig, here's a, here's a subscription for you. I think you need to lose a bit of weight. So the person whose home it is, it has to be their decision. So I said to that client, um, you know, if you tell daughter-in-law that, you know, uh, you're going to buy me as a gift, what does she think? And she's all for it, then, then we'll go ahead. And luckily she did. But can you imagine the, you know, absolute ooh, horror of being given me as a gift? Mm -hmm. Anyway. <laughs> so moving on to putting it all together. So before um, you start decluttering, you have to create a plan. Um, and this is about your timelines. You have to have, um, you know, the consequences or the rewards of what's going to happen. So it could be you've got family coming to stay at Christmas. So I have to declutter the guest room and have it all set up. So that's a reward because that means people can come and stay. Um, it could be that... Um, you know, if you don't declutter uh, the kitchen, um, the dining room table, then the family can't come around to um, have dinner with us because there's so much clutter, there's nowhere to sit. So a consequence is people can't come to have dinner. They'll be sitting on trays watching the TV. It's about having um, timelines for, you know, I'm going to have this particular room done by a particular day because that helps you with the motivation. Um, it also helps you to have a bit of a, um, a plan as to, you know, I'm going to start with the bathroom, now I'm going to work my way through, rather than going, I'm going to do the whole house this weekend because we know that's going to be totally overwhelming. So just having a bit of a timeline set up with your priorities and having your, um, your rewards or your consequences if you don't go about it the, the right way. So do we have any questions or comments? As yet, as to sort of the behind the scenes, anyone? Bueller, Bueller, no? Nope. <laughs> I think, that, I think the important thing here is to mention that a lot of us are at home. So we are finding that, you know, that excuse of, we don't have any time, we've never got time to do the declutter at home, is for some of us, it's, it can't be an excuse any longer. That's so, right. That's you right. know, it's either <laughs> do or die time, I think. That's right. And that's the thing. I mean, when um, I've been doing it myself, so you think as a professional organiser, my home would be totally 
you know, uncluttered and organized. Not at all. Yesterday I went through, you know, all the things like the warranties and all the, those booklets that come with all the um, things around the house. That took me a while. Um, I found all my old iPhones and iPods and all the crap that went with that that I had in a, in a box in a cupboard. You know, you don't want to throw out the phone because, oh, I might need that one day. My new phone breaks and then I'll need the other phone or someone can. So all these things, we all have it. It doesn't matter how organised you are. You can find somewhere in your home that um, needs a bit of help. So, oh, and don't mention the garage with my husband because. No. <laughs> <laughs> we have a... um. We have a challenge, which is that we move rubble from one place to another. Oh. <laughs> like, yes, but Heath, you're a farmer. You're allowed to do that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, no, um, but that's a problem for us as well because, you know, I think we end up just, um, yeah, uh, I, I think we think we're being, getting organised. So we, we'll, take, we'll take all those electronics and we'll um, put them all together in a box and shift them somewhere else and then discover them again, you know, a year later. That's right, that's right. And it doesn't matter where the clutter is, it's still clutter. So mm. from a feng shui point of view, because I used to do feng shui as well, it's mm. the energy of the clutter. It doesn't matter if it's behind a, a closed door or it's hidden away, it's still clutter and it's still cluttering up the energy. And the fact is your brain still knows it's there. Your brain knows in that cupboard, oh my God, it's just so full of cables and things. So it's all about releasing the stress from the brain as well. And you'd be amazed at how you feel after decluttering, like I said, even just your undie drawer or, or some small um, area in the house, how much lighter you feel. You just go, oh, it's just like a weight off my, my shoulders. So I uh, give it a go just for a little bit and then you'll find you get more motivated as you go because you love that feeling. So be prepared. This is the actual process part now. Um, be prepared. It's going to get messier than it was because you're going to have to bring everything out of those areas. You're going to have to sort it. You're going to have to work out where it's going to go and then it has to go to where it's got to go. So to um, get started, you need to have an allocated space where you can go and put things. Um, so clear away space, have it there ready to go. Um, to be prepared, have all your equipment ready. So that's your garbage bags, your sorting tubs, which I'm going to go through in a minute. Um, and have a plan for where is it all going to go. Um, is it going to go to a charity like the Red Cross? Are you going to have a garage sale? Are you going to sell it on eBay? Buy, swap, sell. Wherever it's going to go, you need a plan of attack beforehand. So then it just doesn't end up in your garage going, oh, well, I'll have a garage sale one day or one day I'll go back to the charity shop. Um, with the things I'm declaring at the moment, and I've got a, a client that I'm helping her in her home at the moment, um, all I'm doing is putting it out on the front verge and saying free, help yourself, free knickknacks, free things, and everything's going like that. So I haven't had to, you know, to take it to the, the charity shops or, or whatever, because everyone's out walking their dog, you know, to get their exercise. Um, and they're walking past and picking up all the different bits and pieces. So it can be as simple as just popping it out on your front, um, front lawn. Gary, you're like a dentist giving lollies to children. <laughs> <laughs> New <That's price>. right. <laughs> my teeth are all right i don't care about yours yeah <laughs> well that's the thing one man's trash is another man's treasure and i'll make sure that the stuff i do put out it's not junk it'd be things that i would buy from a recycling center or a charity shop so you know when it's a photo frame it actually has the glass in it it's a nice frame something that i myself would you know like to have um if it's a uh, something that needs to be plugged in it actually works it's not like a broken eye um, you know, CDs, uh, books, DVDs, all of that stuff. Someone will love it, even though your your taste has changed. So, yeah, just make sure that uh, it's something that you would buy yourself and not just rubbish. Um, this process part now, this is sort of the nitty gritty. This is the Marie Kondo part. This is the, the sparking joy. Um, for those of you who've watched Marie Kondo, I know um, Beck hasn't, but she will after this, I'm sure. Um, so what the the number one rule is you only touch an item once so you pick it up say that the photo frame you pick it up and you say you ask the three questions do i love it do i need it is it useful and if you can't answer um, yes to any one of those questions then out it goes so you know this picture frame do i love it well yes it, i do because it's got the pictures of my pets in it uh is it useful well it's a picture frame, so yes, it is useful. Uh, do I need it? Well, I don't really need it because it's got three, I've got 3,000 frames around the house, but because I've answered yes to one of the questions, it can stay. So 
you handle the item once and you put it into its particular tub, which I will um, show you now. Here are the tubs. So you have these ready to go before you start your decluttering. The idea is don't get sidetracked and leave the room where you're decluttering and go, oh, I'll just go and put this sock away in the drawer or, oh, what's that shiny thing over there or whatever. The whole idea is to keep motivated, keep focused, and you will find that you'll get through it so much quicker. Um, and by having your equipment here ready to go, your tubs, you don't have to leave the room. So the keep tub is for just items that are going to be returning to that space. The donate, obviously, they are things that are worthy of some money, so you can donate them. The throw tub is for things that um, are not worth money, they're broken, um, no one's going to pay money for them, whatever, so they can go. And the relocate tub is for things that are going to be kept, but not in that space. So you might be decluttering the, um, the kitchen and you found, you know, a box of tools that should be in the garage. So they go into the relocate tub and at the end you would take that relocate tub around the house to deliver the items of where they're going to go. And you have these nice big tubs with nice big openings. I mean, you can get these for $2 from the, the $2 shop. They just make it easier to be throwing things into and to be sorting as you go and it's putting, um, you know, sorting all your bits and bobs in together. Once everything is cleared out of the um, area and everything's put into its tubs, give everything a good clean. Because again, you're thinking about how the clutter is affecting your brain. So once you've, uh, the area is clear, you've given it a nice wipe down, you've got rid of the dust bunnies, it's almost like, oh, that energy is just back into the space again. So that way, uh, when you're returning the things back into the space, it's all clean and you know it's clean. It's not just popping things back where they're all dusty and, and yucky underneath because that's going to affect the way you think. Does anyone have any questions or comments as the process so far or all good? Lovely. <laughs> oh, I can see the little things. All right, moving on. So before you put the items back into the space, you have to look at your organising style. So, um, you know, if you were um, organising a home office per se, which is a, a very big one, and you thought, you know, all my files and things, I'm just going to shove them back into a filing cabinet. That might not be how your brain works. So you have to work out what your organising style is before you can put the items back into the space. So we're going to be going through a few of them here. Insight. So insight is a, um, an organising style where you have to have things on show, otherwise you're going to forget about it. So you will find you'll have things on shelves rather than in cupboards behind closed doors. You will have, um, such as this office here, you need to have all your files out that you're working on because as soon as you file them away into a folder or into a filing cabinet, you forget what you're working on and your brain is like, oh, quick, what, you know, I forget. And then, oh, maybe I've got nothing to do after all and you forget to um, follow up. So it's about having things in sight that you can see um, and then um, knowing the, what you're, you know, what you're working on. So the next one is out of sight. So this is for people who, for them, the clutter causes stress. So they have to have clean lines on everything. Everything must be off the countertops, as you can see in the photo. Everything must behind, be behind uh, cupboard doors. There can't be sort of any um, things on shelves that they can see. Um, nothing on the kitchen table, as you can see there as well. So it's all about that minimalistic look and having everything totally put away. So they're... Um, uh, organising style for their appointments would also be the fact that they would have everything on a computer, like on a computer diary. They wouldn't have uh, big wall planners on the wall, such as Insight people would be. Um, they wouldn't have, you know, diaries on their desks and paperwork. It would all be lovely in their little um, palm pilot or whatever it is that they use to organise. So very minimalistic. On the opposite to that, it's in here somewhere and no doubt we all know someone who has an organizing style such as this and don't be don't be alarmed, this actually is an organising style. So you will find that people who whose offices look like this are very creative people. They um, have all their projects in going everywhere. If you were to walk in there and say, hey, Bob, where's your tax return from 1975? They'd be able to just go straight in there and pull it out. They know exactly where everything is. And the worst thing you can do for someone like this would be to go in there and tidy it up and put things away. Um, because then their whole world would just explode. I actually had a, um, 
a hoarding client, obviously, who, you know, their whole house looked like this, but I had to be very, very careful about what I touched because even though it looked like it was a total mess, it was a, it's his, his way of thinking. It was a way he knew where everything was. So just by touching one thing, it was going to send his world into a spin. So we had to be really careful. So it is an organising style. So don't be too upset if your kids are like this because you might find uh, that they're just going to be very creative children. So um, just allow it to happen and, and shut the door if it really annoys you. And the last one is everything in its place. So no doubt you all know someone like this in your um, in your office. You might find that um, these are the people that love a labeler. They'll get the labeler out. They'll put the labeler on everything. They'll have the label on their their um, their stapler. So if you know Bob comes along and takes Betty's stapler, she's like, oh Bob, I want that back, please, and, and put it in its little spot. Um, pantries like this, they have everything in their perfectly organised um, plastic containers that you can see, but it all the time, whenever you use anything, it must go back into its spot. Otherwise, again, this type of organiser, they go, oh, my scissors aren't in the spot, I've lost the scissors, and it really freaks them out. So every time it's used, it must go back home. Um, in fact, this is, this is a great way of um, organising things in a, um, an office space where many people are using the different items, like the stationery and cupboard and whatnot. But the idea is it's got a home, put it back. Oh, and these sorts of people love lists as well. So they love a list, they love a to-do list, they love to tick it off. So I'm in that category as well. Storage options. Doesn't everybody love a Howard Storage World or one of these sorts of shops? So many, you know, entertaining things we can all play with. But before you buy storage, you have to remember your organising style. And before um, you go out and buy any storage, declutter first. I had a client where in her excitement with me coming around to help declutter, she went out and bought all these tubs and things like that. And then when we got to her home, when we decluttered all the stuff, there was nothing left to put in these tubs. And she had all these tubs that she bought and now they were just going to be wasted. She had to take them back, I think, because she, you know, bought before um, she was ready. But remembering your organising style. So if you like to be able to see things, you would have see-through storage. If you don't like things being seen, you like things tucked away, then you would make it uh, more of the solid, the solid storage behind the closed doors. And again, the people that love everything in its place, they will go for the pretty storage because you want it to look fantastic on your shelves. So every professional organiser used to love a, um, a shop like this because it was like our little, you know, um, paradise where we could go and, and grab all sorts of different things. But always make sure you know your organising style before you go and spend the money on your storage. Oh, and the other tip is have a look around the house to see what you've already got. There's no reason why you have to go out and spend money. Um, just see what you've already got before you um, spend money. And, you know, you might already have all sorts of bas pretty baskets and things around the, around the house. So, okay, this one's very important. So when you've decluttered, it's really hard work. I mean, when I work with a client in their home, um, normally a minimum of two hours, a maximum of four hours for me to, to go into a home. I say to anybody else, start with just five minutes, see how you go and you'll find the motivation. You usually get motivated and go, okay, I want to keep on going and you'll keep on going. Four hours is enough. Your brain cannot cope with it because you're making so many decisions. So four hours is the absolute max at a time. And then reward yourself for the job well done. Go and have a lovely bath, have a cup of tea, have a glass of wine, you know, um, if you need to, not to go out and buy anything, but maybe, you know, go and have a facial or something like that. Your brain needs the rewards for going through all the hard work. And because you're rewarding, your brain goes, oh, that wasn't so bad after all. I think I might do that again because I know I'm going to be rewarded at the end. The other thing is to plan your next session. So yeah, you've done the hard work, but pop it in your diary for the next time you're going to do it. So it might have been 10 minutes today. I'm going to do 10 minutes again tomorrow. It might be I've done four hours on Monday. I'm going to wait until next Monday to do another four hours. Get support from your family and friends. Be accountable. Tell everyone you're doing it. Going, hey, I'm decluttering the garage and, and share it on Facebook or do whatever. You'd be amazed if everyone going, oh, look at you. Aren't you good? I'm going to do the same thing. Or you go, girl. Or here's some tips that I've learned. If you're accountable, it just makes it so much easier. These days, we can't have the friends and family come over to help out, but they can be doing it virtually. They can be watching along on Zoom while you do it. So you never know.
And the last tip is um, do a little bit every day. If you can just do five minutes every day and get into that habit, you will find it makes it so much easier to continue. So, um, Beck sent you a handout um, before the meeting. So, I don't know if anyone had any questions or anything about all the tips and tools or sort of any of the ideas um, if you've got on there. But um, I'll be following up with an email to you all afterwards just to say, hey, do you have any more questions? So if you've got any questions about the presentation today or the tips and tools um, handout, please let me know and I can give you some ideas. And also just to let you know of what I'm going through on Facebook at the moment, it's a, it's a free, it's called the free 30 day Corona Clutter Challenge. I saw this as a great opportunity while everyone's at home. Um, they can follow along. I do a little video every day of different areas around the house where I've been decluttering and organising. And um, that way, the 30 days, there's 30 little areas around your home. It could be things like, you know, photos on your computer like I did this morning, or it could be cleaning out the, the kitchen pantry through to the two-part series on the garage, because that took so long to do. Um, but if you were to just go onto Facebook and um, type in Corona Clutter Challenge, uh, you can uh, sign up to join me. Um, you can get a copy of my free ebook. You can just follow along each day or just go back to the beginning and, and, and go through all the different ones. But that's just a little bit of fun for um, while you're in your self-isolation and you can get your home clutter free and organised. Um, but that's me. These are all the ways you can find me online, my uh, website, my Facebook page, my Insta, where I'm putting up all the, and uh, YouTube, where I'm putting up the videos as well. So you can find the videos in a few different spots for the Corona Clutter Challenge. Um, but that was it. It was um, the fastest presentation I've ever done in my life. <laughs> It was great, Kerry. Thank you. Fantastic. Um, You're welcome. I could open the floor, though. That's fabulous. I know that, like I said before, we've got all this extra time on our hands. And whilst some of us have got very, very nice, neat and organised offices, um, the home maybe sometimes doesn't translate. So we've got all this time at home now to be able to put some of those things that you mentioned into practice. Um, yes. I have a couple of questions and we might open it to the floor. But just obviously you've got your own unique style in your own home and you can do whatever you like. But when we do get back into offices, how, any tips and suggestions on how you can manage those different styles? You, you might have somebody who's really OCD and you might have someone else who, I, I pray to God that my children never end up like that you were saying about the person who works in there. So if that happens, we're gonna, have, we're gonna have a massive problem in this house. But what, what do you do if you've actually got those, you know, you've got different, same team, different personalities in your team. Any thoughts around that? So it's exactly as um, Lynn said with the, uh, the mangoes, the bananas, the limes and everything. You have to understand everyone's own organising style. So when it comes to um, the things like the stationary cupboard, obviously that's going to be probably organised because that's how, you know, whoever's looking after stationary, that would have it as a, a sort of a normal system where you can find things. When it comes to... Um, files on computers and uh, where things are kept in filing cabinets. Um, the most important thing you've got to realise in an office is if you were to be hit by a bus, you need someone back in the office to be able to find what you're working on so things can continue on in your absence. Um, so the way you've got your files in your filing cabinet should also reflect the way you've got your files set up on your computer. Um, and if you've got some weird, you know, radar from MASH way of um, organising, not the radar, it was Klinger, I think, of organising, you know, the files, um, you need to share with somebody the process that you go through because otherwise, like I said, if you're sick or and things are urgent need to be done, someone needs to be able to understand your filing system. I know back when I was working for Canberra Tourism, it was government, so we had to have a particular... Um, system that we all had to become a part of. So we actually had to go on a course and learn how to do this filing system and everybody had to file everything in um, that particular way. Unfortunately, that doesn't work for everybody and it used to do a lot of people's head in, um, but you just have to uh, compromise, I guess, for the, the, the main sorts of files. But anything to do with your own desk, if you know that that person is Mr. Creative, they could be in the, you know, the, the graphic designer or the website designer or whatever. Usually the website people, desks are really, really messy. You just have to understand, don't get, you know, um, crazy about it. You have to understand that that's their organising style. Don't go in there and start tidying up, you know, if he's 
half sick and oh, I'll just help Bob, you know, tidy up his desk while he's not here, because that could be the worst thing you can do. Um, if it is, you know, Betty and she's OCD about everything in its place and she's got her name on her stapler, make sure you help Betty by, you know, taking the stapler back. I'm just going to borrow your staple, Betty, and write it in the book. Stapler taken by Kerry and returned by this date. Um, so just be aware of everybody else's organising style and fit in with that because you can't change anybody. This is the way that they are. This is the way their brain works. You can't change a creative person into a uh, organised one for, you know, minimalistic um, because it just won't, won't work. So just recognise that everyone in your office is different and um, just work in with them. But just make sure the things that are, you know, um, the files that everyone needs to get a hold of or whatever, everybody knows how to, how to do that so nothing's lost. Oh, and the kitchen should always be kept clean too. And the fridge. <laughs> None of this yogurt from 1976. Oh, that's oh. my mother. That is definitely my mother. It's like yeah. a little expedition through the timeline when you go uh, into the yes. It's amazing. The, the petri dish. Mm. Yes. Does anyone have any other questions or comments for Kerry? Oh, I resonate with everything that you've just said, in particular, the office. So at, at Bonville in our office, we have about, um, I think it's like maybe six or seven people in quite a, a small space. And we recently did a um, office refurb to try and fit everybody because we had to bring in two more people into that space. So it can be a very busy and full office space. Um, our marketing manager, which Beck and Heath are probably familiar with, Chris and Tanya, of course, um, he has a desk just like that, really creative. So the marketing side of things for him, and it does my head in because I can't deal with it. Luckily, we sit facing back to back, so I don't have to look at it all day. But yeah, I have to really um, restrain myself for having to just go over and do a quick zhuzh to tidy it up <laughs> because I can't, I can't deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. It does our head in because if you're an organised person seeing that clutter, the first thing you want to do is go and make it in, even just make it into little piles. Yes, I think just, I have a problem. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but yeah, that's the thing. You have to go, okay, it's not mine. So just when you go into your space, just keep away from that space and just concentrate on your own. And then when you walk past, just go, oh, I'm not looking, not looking. <laughs> because it can, it can affect us and it can make us stress. And if that means, you know, when you're coming into the office first thing in the morning and the first thing you see is that messy desk, that sets your brain off for, a, you know, a bad start for the day. So just, you know, take along a nice picture book or something and walk past and concentrate on your own style. The other way. And then, and if you have to have a meeting with him, don't go, oh, I'm coming to your desk. Go, hey, let's go for coffee somewhere else. Or, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> keep out of that um, eye shot of it. So, yeah, no, it does affect us. It's true. Mm. Definitely. Mm. Very good. Does anyone else have any questions or comments for Kerry? No? Any life hacks that you've discovered? We were talking about one. Beck. Beck's got to do hers. Yeah, go Heath. You, you do it. You do it. I we got discovered taught. this life, life hack this morning, guys. We're, it'll change your life. Ready? Go for it, Heath. You demonstrate. This, this <laughs> is a Japanese flag. No, no. Uh, <laughs> this is a cold bag. Um, so Beck showed us this amazing hack this morning. So the Coles bags in my house drive me nuts and, and I'm a farmer, so I maybe am not as green as I should have been. Um, I, I'm glad that we're recycling our bags. I'm very happy with that now, um, but it took me a little while to get used to it. And, and frankly, I'm still not used to it. So what that means is that I still, I get more and more of these bags every time I go shopping because I never remember to take any. <laughs> so anyway, um, keeping them tidy, I think is just a magic, magic thing. So Beck showed us today, uh, so there's, there's my open bag. The rule is um, you fold it in thirds um, across the centre below the handle. So thirds. Right? Can you see that okay? Well done. Okay. We can see that. Yep. And then Doing thirds. Well, Doing well. Roger. And then thirds again um, up through the centre towards the handle. So you've got your square. Right? And then one triangle and another triangle, and then you bring, oh, how did this work? Right? <laughs> uh, you bring the... You bring the point of the triangle up through the handles. You bring the point of the track, right, through the handle. There we go, yes, got it. I forgot that bit there, Beck, thank you. And well, it's um, close enough to the <laughs> Japanese flag that I had before. <laughs> so I'm very Isn't happy that with that hack. hack. I love it, I love it. And just to show you, this is what the finished product look like. looks like. Oh. 
And that used to be my laundry cupboard, just bags falling out everywhere. So all these things that you discover when you're spending more time at home. Yeah. And if you if you want to take that hack and um, do your whole house, you can do your undie drawer, you can do your socks, you can do anything like that, anything you can fold the Marie Kondo way um, if you've got the time and uh, the inclination. <laughs> I don't think I ever thought in a million years on a Destination North Coast business events call we'd be talking about folding out undies. But oh, it's the first time for everything. Uh, <laughs> why not? I, I, I can't. I cannot take us there, but I would love to. Um, <laughs> I'd love to know if you've done any work with um, with uh, a shed, um, with uh, like the nuts and bolts and screws and stuff that you yeah. get mountains of. Yeah, you I'd have. love to send you the video. Yeah, we did this. Um, this was a two-part series with my husband. So he's because he inherited all my father's tools and uh, oh, right, nuts right. and bolts and screws and everything. Yeah. We've got this whole shelf, one whole wall of the garage in um, in our garage is all those little compartment um, shelves. And then right, right. each of the shelves are these tubs and then each of the tubs are nuts and bolts and everything. He's got thousands of, of them just in case, you know, because they'll come in handy. And every time they come in handy, he goes, oh, I don't have the right one. And then he has to go to Bunnings and buy some more. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, oh, that's different though. I mean, that's uh, that's uh, a special religion. Of course it is. Yeah. Mm -mm. <laughs> oh, that's terrific. Well, thank you very much, Kerry. We really appreciate Pleasure. it. Pleasure.